and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Gemma. And me, Dane. Dane, is it finally time to make my favourite bake? It is finally time. Gemma has not stopped going on about these Twix Bites from the new Crumbs and Doilies book, page 202. And you can get this snazzy bookmark only if you order from crumbsanddoilies.co.uk, I'm just saying. <laughs> but what are they? <laughs> That was the most important What are question. they? Well, the reason I love them so much is because they're like the perfect morsel. So they're salty and they're sweet, they're chewy, they're crumbly. You've got that lovely buttery crumbly shortbread with perfectly chewy caramel dipped in milk chocolate. Like, oh, it's basically a millionaire <laughs> shortbread in bite-sized form. It is. I love so it. So good. It is. Now, I, they're not too difficult, so I don't really need help making them, but I do need help eating them, otherwise I'll just smash them all. So, Dave is going <laughs> to help me today, and he's going to go and get ready to make the caramel bit. Yes, I'll leave the book here for you, I know you know oh, the thanks. recipe, but <laughs> yeah. just in case. I don't need that. <laughs> um, anyway, the shortbread biscuits could not be simpler. They are really easy. You don't need to chill them. You don't need to rub them together with your fingers. They're really straightforward. I've got a bowl here and I'm gonna add 75 grams of soft unsalted butter, 30 grams of caster sugar, a half a teaspoon of salt and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then just give that a stir until it's all really well mixed. You're not trying to beat it or anything, you're just trying to combine the ingredients. Once your mixture's ready, you can add your flour. And I've got 115 grams of plain flour. I haven't sieved it or anything, it doesn't need to be sieved. And then I'm gonna switch up to my fork. I feel like it gives my shortbreads a bit of a lighter texture. And just wanna stir all of that together with your fork. And what you're looking for eventually is somewhere between a shaggy and breadcrumb consistency. Once you've hit that, you can get your hand in there and give it all a squeeze to bring it together a little bit before turning it out onto the worktop. And then give it a brief knead just a couple of times just to make sure it doesn't fall apart when you roll it. Okay, that's probably enough. You don't want to overwork your shortbread, otherwise you lose that shortness that is obviously famous for. It's short by name, short by nature. Now, I've got some flour here. I'm just going to lightly dust my worktop and I'm also going to dust my rolling pin because I don't want any of this to stick. So now you want to roll this all out until it's about five or six millimetres thick. You want it to be nice and thick because we're going to put a little divot in the middle which is going to help contain our caramel. That's pretty good to me. Now, I like these to be bite-sized, so I'm using a round cookie cutter that is about five centimetres in diameter. If you want to make smaller ones, you go. If you want to make big ones, you do you. That's all good. Just dip it in some flour first, just to stop it sticking, and then chomp as many circles as you possibly can out. Get them as close together as possible so you're not wasting anything. And you can re-roll your scraps, but I'd say only do it once, otherwise you do lose some of that shortness. So, I've got all of my rounds chomped out, and now we need to make the divot. Now, this isn't a foolproof way of containing caramel because the caramel is really thick and oozy and they do kind of bake out a little bit, but it does help, I promise. It's much better than just leaving them divotless. So I'm gonna use like the back of a tablespoon measure. You could use the end of your rolling pin even, but just dust it lightly in flour first and then press it right into the middle of your circle. Lovely, and now these just need to be baked at 170 degrees C. We're using a fan assisted oven as normal, and they just need to be cooked for 10 minutes until they're lovely and golden around the edges. Whilst the shortbread is in the oven baking, we can get on with making the caramel that is filled in these delicious Twix bites. Now, this is a really, really simple process, but the most important thing that you're gonna need for this is a thermometer. Whether it's a digital one like this, this is my preference because it's got the screen and you can see the numbers really easily, or whether it's one of these kind of candy ones that you stick in the saucepan, leave it there. It's probably less faff actually because you don't have to keep taking it in and out like this one, but I prefer to read the numbers on this one. So get yourself a thermometer. It's non-negotiable with this because we need to read the caramel at two different temperatures. And if you get it too high, then the caramel is not gonna be nice and chewy and pull apart like stringy mozzarella. That's kind of what I liken it to, but in caramel sugar form, it's not cheese. Although cheesy caramel, no, no. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't get it too high. And if you get it too low, then the caramel is gonna just splodge everywhere. It's gonna be really runny and not set. So that's my advice. Take it or leave it or have runny caramel, it's up to you. But well, the first thing we're gonna do is get the additions ready. Any caramel that you're making, it happens really quickly at the end. So you wanna make sure you get 
the butter ready. I've got 30 grams here, cubed and chopped, it's cold. And then I've got 90 grams of cream. And then to that, I'm just gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and a quarter of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Turning your attention to the hob, I'm throwing in 105 grams of caster sugar and 90 grams of golden syrup. We're just gonna get this on a medium heat and leave it to bubble and boil away. It'll take a couple of minutes, but you want it to reach 155 degrees Celsius on your chosen thermometer. This is really important to get it correct at this stage because as I said, you don't want hard caramel and you don't want it really soft and loose. Once it's reached 155 degrees, take it off of the heat and then slowly pour in the cream, salt and vanilla mixture. Going slowly, a little bit at a time because it will bubble up and it's really, really hot, so you need to be careful. Once it's all in, get it back on the heat and then we're gonna bring it up to 127 degrees Celsius. This will, again, take a couple of minutes, but just be patient. And then once it's reached 127 degrees, take it off the heat immediately and add in the cold butter. This will bring the temperature down and it'll make it go nice and smooth and glossy and shiny. Your caramel's ready. It is nice and luscious and really thick and glossy. Oh, I could just eat it like this, but not really because it's hot, so it'll burn my tongue. But we need to wait for it to cool down for about 10 minutes, and then Gemma will fill the shortbread with it. Wow, Dane's caramel looks incredible. This is just the perfect colour, the perfect consistency. It's still hot, um, it hasn't cooled down too much, so it's just right to use, so get rid of my spoon. Now, as you can see, the divots that we made in the shortbread, they're not super pronounced, and then, like I said earlier, it's not a foolproof method of containing the caramel. The caramel is, it's kind of a life of its own. It kind of spreads and oozes all over the place, but this does help a little bit to contain it. So I've got like a teaspoon measure. Uh, you can use whatever measure you like. And I'm just going to very carefully, because it is still quite hot, gather a little bit up in my spoon and then bounce it onto the center of my cookie. And then once it starts falling off the teaspoon, I'm going to use small circular motions just to bring it back into the middle. That will encourage the caramel to sort of smooth out evenly. That's all my shortbread biscuits adorned with a crowning glory of delicious chewy caramel. There may be a little bit left in your pan. That's okay because you can always put it into like a small bowl, let it set, turn it out, chop it up, wrap those into little caramels that you can give away or just eat at a later stage. <laughs> Why not? Um, but it, there's not a lot there, so you could just scoop it out with a spoon and eat it like I would. Anyway, these are still quite warm and they will be warm for some time because caramel. So just let them set for about 20 minutes, half an hour, and then they'll be ready to chocolatize. See you later. Welcome back to the chocolate station. <laughs> yes, and we've both got our bowls of melted milk chocolate here, which I already kind of roughly tempered. And I did this by just measuring out my 100 grams of milk chocolate. And then I took out about a quarter of this, chopped it up really finely, and then the bulk of the other chocolate, I put it in the microwave in short bursts just to melt it until there's still a few chips left. Then I took this back and added the chopped chocolate chips and just stirred it until it was completely smooth. And there we have it, it is completely smooth. And when we dip this, it's gonna have a nice kind of set crack to the chocolate. Oh, it should do. Oh, <laughs> it will. I believe in you. Thank you. And us. <laughs> so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna grab our biscuits one by one and then turn them upside down. And this is gonna get messy, guys. So prepare to need to wipe your fingers at all times because your fingers are gonna get chocolatey. But that's okay. Um, so I've got my chocolate biscuit. I'm gonna turn it upside down, dunk it in about halfway up the side, making sure, you know, I might need to look at it every now and then just to make sure that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna wiggle it over the bowl just to get rid of some of that excess of chocolate because we don't want it to be like really thick with chocolate. We just want a sort of nice coating. And then pop it onto a tray. And if you want to be extra snazzy like us, grab a fork and just go Whoop. And then it kind of, I don't know what to call that. It's probably got a name in for like French pastry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just calling it a fork, a forking. Yes. Is that okay? <laughs> 
I said it. I said what I said. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, but it's oh. it's okay. That's what it is now. Get forking and dipping. They look amazing. They look so good. And, oh, Jinx. I tempered the <laughs> chocolate correctly because they've set. And so did you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, look at us go. <laughs> if you find that they're not tempered and they're not setting immediately like ours, don't worry. You just put them in the fridge for a few seconds. They'll come around, won't they? They will. But the good news is this means that we can just eat them straight away. We can. So shall we? Yes. Okay, here we go. Oh my goodness. Mm. I'm so excited. I've been waiting for this. Okay. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Look Whoa. at the... Whoa. Whoa. Look Whoa. at Jane's stew. Mmm. Like stringy mozzarella. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> but these are my favourite, favourite, favourite biscuits. They're so good. Bi perfectly bite sized. Mm -hmm. Perfectly balanced, salty and sweet. That shortbread is so buttery and like mm. crumbly and, and really short. Which exactly it should be. Yeah, exactly. So good. Well, I think we did great here, guys. Really good. <laughs> mm. And if you do make these, make sure that you tag us on Instagram, at Cupcake Gemma, hashtag Cupcake Gemma, um, so that we can see your bakes because we love seeing them. And these are like, you should just definitely make these. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You'll love them. And there's so many more recipes. There's over 90 recipes in the book, aren't there? Yeah, there are. And if you already have the book, please do let us know in the comments box below what you'd like to see us make from the book next, because it's always good to have like a video to back it up rather than just writing if you're more of like a visual person. Yeah. I mean, there's photos for each recipe, mm -hmm. but a tutorial video is always great. Oh, so. let us know if you've actually baked along with your book with this video as well. Yeah. That'd be fun. Yeah. Some people out there might have done that. <laughs> um, thanks so much for joining us. Also, don't forget we have a bake club over on Patreon. That's forward slash Cupcake Gemma. Hang on, where is it? Patreon.com <laughs> forward slash Cupcake Gemma. And over at the Bake Club, if you join up, you can be part of our gang and you get fully downloadable PDF versions of all the recipes we put on YouTube and archive recipes that we did like donkeys years ago that you can print off and put in a folder and like keep forever and refer back to whenever you like. Also, we do extra content. We sit on the sofa sometimes and have a little chat. Sometimes we have special guests. We do. We have loads of behind the scenes photos up, up as well. Uh, and we chat with you. <laughs> yeah, and if you do sign up, you get like a first sneak peek a day earlier of yeah. Thursday's videos. So it's just a great way to support us on the channel. So it we can is. keep creating the content that we do. Yeah, we really appreciate every single one of you Bake Club members. We obviously appreciate all of you guys, even if you're not a Bake Club member, <laughs> um, because you help us keep doing what we're doing. So we're so grateful. We're really grateful for you to, for watching our Twix Bites. Yes. And you're going to be grateful to us for giving them to you, I hope. When you make them. Oh my God, you're going <laughs> to love us forever. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Can we eat the rest of it? Yes. <laughs>